I don't know what to do with the cigarette. I don't, I don't smoke. You don't smoke? Nah, I was, I was trying to look cool. Like some Joaquin Phoenix shit, you know? Anything I did during the saturation era, I didn't expect it to have any sort of impact on my career. I was just doing stuff to survive and to express myself. The first Brockhampton album, Saturation, that's kind of like when I decided to really direct our own stuff. We would normally put out a song, see how people responded to that song, and then have a week to make the next video. So it's kind of like just paying attention to the echo chamber and seeing what people are saying and using that as inspiration on how to make the next video better. I like Spike Jones a lot. We did this TV show on uh, Viceland and I got to meet him. And he saw like the first cut of our TV show and he basically said it wasn't like as original and cool as it could be and he was like, you should use your neighborhood more and like go around your neighborhood and do things like that are right in front of you and make the most of that. And that honestly changed like everything for me. It made me reimagine the stuff that was right in front of me, if that makes sense. I started seeing my neighborhood as like uh, this giant set piece with a ton of character to it. And I would like send him the videos we were making and he kind of became like my teacher every week. He would give me notes and like critique the video we put out like the week before. So I would use those notes and that feedback uh, and, and apply it to the next video. For Junkie, I listen to the song like a million times on loop, and I'll just go on Tumblr or whatever and find as many images and just steal my favorite things and recreate them. At the beginning of the video, um, Roberto, who is like our webmaster in the group, he opens the video and he talks about Jaden Smith and how like we're on a search for him. And Rob is kind of like the narrator of the entire Brockhampton universe. We open all the videos with him. It was actually inspired by Jackass. You know, it would be like, uh, what's up, it's Johnny Knoxville or something like that. Hi, I'm Johnny Knoxville, welcome to Jackass. And I kind of wanted to do a rip of that, just add a little bit of narrative to it. Delete my tweets because I'm ashamed of being a fucking Simpson. Aspect Ratio is inspired by American Honey, by Andrea Arnold. Normally when I do a video, it's like, kind of comes right off of me watching a movie a bunch of times in theaters. I watched it like eight times in, in theaters and it's a three hour long movie. That aspect ratio made everything on screen feel really intimate and I wanted our music videos to feel the same way because it was like the way people met us for the first time. For the Junkie video, it was the first time we ever did casting outside of the group. So we did like a, a casting call and had some of our fans in the video. It was just cool and they're like running around the neighborhood and uh, wearing like dresses. And we had ballerinas in my room and a bunch of fog. The smoke alarm kept going off. I put my hand up. It looks really cool because I like go up and no one knows what it is, but like I'm trying to stop the smoke alarm thing. When Merlin is in the bathtub with Fruit Loops, I couldn't come up with anything for his part and I asked him what he wanted to do. And he said he wanted to be in the bathtub with a bunch of cereal. And like for months after that, there was like, the, the bathtub was really gross and no one went in there. It was like five giant boxes of Fruit Loops. For the devil angel moment, I was just inspired by Joba's verse. I just saw that in my head, I don't know. We set up a big green screen in one of the rooms, knocked it out really quick. It came out cool, I, I, I like that part a lot. Why you always rap about being gay? Cause not enough niggas rap and be gay. I think after our first album that got a lot of attention, it's like, I saw people online saying I talked about being gay a lot, so I just asked myself that question and answered it in the song. And it honestly did a lot for me because now I can like talk about being gay as much as possible and like people reference that verse, which is cool. Gummy. I watched Baby Driver, I think eight times as well. So I wanted to do something that was like a, a bank robbery or something like that, so we just kind of had our, our, a fake bank robbery in our neighborhood. Obviously, it's very inspired, like wardrobe-wise, by Reservoir Dogs. We had the suits on and stuff. And we also had the names, like, throughout the video, which was cool. Keep my heart with my dogs, keep my car in the yard. And that was an idea that came at the end, because we didn't really know how to tie the video together. And it was cool that we had that little touch. The most challenging part of making the Gummy music video was uh, we had an alpaca at our house. Cash don't last, my friends are 
the alpaca was just like going around the house and like around the neighborhood. I just really wanted to use a, uh, some, some sort of animal, so I looked at like all these animals online. It was fun. I miss those days a lot, very wholesome. Those days, like when we were making all those videos, there was just less pressure and everything was fun. We were just like doing what we wanted. I would love to inject innocence and vulnerability back into like our newer stuff. Which, I, which we're leaning into 100%. And I think like with the newer stuff, it feels more like that. Yeah. Lamb. For our music video, Lamb, we were supposed to like rent a lowrider and take it to somewhere like Hillside-ish in California. But we didn't do it because me and Ashlyn got into a fight that day. Ashlyn is my friend from Texas. When he moved to California with us, he was just supposed to run our social media and he didn't know how to work a camera. And when I wanted to direct my own videos, it made sense to go with him because we both liked the same kind of movies and he just picked up a camera and we kind of like created our own uh, visual language together. And like, I wouldn't really make anything with anyone other than him. I don't remember what the fight was about, but we got into a fight. And then hours went by and we decided to just film it in the front yard. I've learned that every time I try to make a polished music video, if I have a set and there's like all these people and I'm trying to tell them what to do, I fail. It's like the worst thing ever. But if it's just me and Ashlyn and a few guys in the group and we're like in front of our house, that's when I've made my most effective work. We can finish an edit uh, in like <laughs> seven hours. There's no feedback from anyone except like the people who are in the group and our management and like close friends, you know. I never see the music video in my head before we finish it. Once we get like all the images, I'll just sit next to our editor, HK, and like piece it together. It's more like a puzzle and just seeing like what feels right, which images move us the most. Sometimes that process can be a lot of fun. Sometimes not really. It's, it's not fun, I get frustrated and I don't know what to do with all the pieces. That's when I want to like give up. Star. The Star music video is my favorite video we've done. It didn't require like much thinking. It just like came to came to me immediately, I guess. Standing on my two legs. We're all blue because I was watching a bunch of Hype Williams videos, and there's this one Busta Rhymes video where they're red, and I just decided blue. Blue is also less problematic if you want to be painted a color. Hype Williams is a big inspiration. I think a lot of music videos are like really inspired by Hype Williams right now, though. So I'm kind of like leaning to the other side of that. I don't know what that means, I'm trying to fill it out, but like everything kind of looks like an old 90s hip hop music video right now, which was cool to me at one point, but I'm not really fucking with it right now. I don't know why, it's just like, it's not, it's kind of played. Everything we did for the music videos, it was always rooted in like, uh, how can we have the most fun? And like, how can it look like we're having a bunch of fun on camera? I don't care for what they gotta say. Like people wanna see friends together, enjoying each other, brotherhood, you know? We kind of got in trouble when we did some of the Saturation One videos because we're living in South Central, and I think they started, as the video started to uh, like gain traction, there was people in the neighborhoods and like maybe their kids would like tell them that they're in the videos. And some of these people didn't want to be on camera or filmed or be put on YouTube, so like they would come and press us, like knock, knock at the door and ask us to like stop filming. Got kind of, kind of sketch. New Orleans. Nothing different now, all around now. That video is a one, a one, one take video. And we just ran with it. We were on tour in Australia. We made this documentary about like the story of Brockhampton, I guess. And we were playing it in theaters and we had this screening in Australia and after the screening we decided to shoot the music video right there with like all of the fans that were in the theater. And that was like a lot of a lot of fun. The lighting that was in the room already was like perfect for the mood and tone of the music video. We kind of just freestyled at first and like let the performers figure out what they wanted to do and the audience kind of like moved around us and they were there to support us in a way. People don't like that video though. People don't like that video because they think it's lazy. I like simple and like effective stuff though. I don't think it's lazy. I think people want to see a lot of shit sometimes because they're like programmed to want that. But also maybe it's just not as dope as it could be for a simple video. I don't know, because people do like simplicity as well. I'm thinking out loud, you don't have to use any of this. Peach. My favorite moment 
in the Peach video is uh, the opening where Dominic Fike is hanging out the side of the car with his hand out the window, because that's the very first thing I saw in my head when I heard the song. It just feels very, like, summery. For Peach, we wanted to do the split screen thing because some stuff was, like, strong on its own, but I felt like it'd be stronger next to another strong image. Once we got down to the edit, we realized it kind of looked cooler that way. I've learned that I need to, to make more uh, effective work, more impactful stuff, visually. That's, that's all I want to do, really. And just reach higher. That's something I learned from Shia LaBeouf, is like, you can, you can keep it DIY and simple, but if you're not reaching, you're really not doing anything.